password flyer. That's what we're going to work on right now. That is um, a class assignment. We're going to do it right now. Um, <clears throat> it's easy. You are going to create it. You're going to follow along, pause, fast forward, whatever you need to do to create it. Um, that's the first assignment. The second one you're doing on your own and the third one you're doing on your own. So let's get started. The first thing, well, let me, first thing I would like you to do is go to your search down here right next to your start and just type word. Okay. And you'll see it searches everything. You've got apps here. You've got different apps that have word in it. I'm not sure why alarms and clock is in there. Word, you've got some folders, and then we've got documents over here for Word. Where it says app, what I'd like you to do is right click on it, right click on it, and choose pin to taskbar. Now, if it already, if it says, if you already have it pinned there, it will say unpin from taskbar. That's because these are toggle keys. I'll go ahead and put this back on. That's because these are toggle keys. You click it once, it, it's a dynamic menu. Dynamic menu means it knows what's going on. It knows you have something pinned there. So it's not going to give you the option to pin it. Um, but it will give you the option to unpin it. <clears throat> unpin it and um, then it's unpinned and it knows you it's unpinned so it only gives you the option to pin it it's a toggle key on off on off okay so I want word to be down here in your in your taskbar let's close this I'll just click out of there and um, I'm gonna quickly show you what what, what the end products gonna look like we did we did a flyer during the second half of class i forgot to record it so now i'm making a video of it and this was the end product right there i'm going to walk through creating this um of course you get more information than just how to create this but i'm going to walk through creating this and uh, that's going to be that's going to be our group project so it should look very similar to this i don't care if you choose different colors um or a different shape for a frame, but it is gonna be very, your, your end product is gonna be very similar to this. All right, let me get started. When you first open Word, I'm gonna close it because I want, I want, to, you to, I want to see when it first opens, there's nothing open in it. <clears throat> this is what it looks like. If you have a different version, it may look a little different, but basically you'll get your templates. You may or may not get your recently edited documents here. Um, templates, I, the only thing I want to say about templates is more templates. Um, you, if you have this search here, you can search for any kind of templates. There's thousands. Um, you can search for birthday. And so here's a bunch of birth templates for birthday cards or birthday invitations or whatever else. Okay, I'm gonna go back. So templates, go ahead and search for them. Also, we will at one point be making our own personal template about something. And so the office templates are right here. Personal templates are right there. You see I've made some templates already. But we are gonna do a new document, blank document. Go ahead and open a blank document. If you cannot see your toolbar up here, I want you to go up to the top right there and click it. And then you get options. This is all about toolbars. So I want I don't want the auto hide. If you have a small computer screen, you might want that. Um, I want show tab and commands. I want to see all my tools. While we're working on these assignments, you need to see all your tools. Um, 
when you open up, your default is to be on the Home tab. Um, most of what we're going to look at is on the Home tab, a little bit with the Insert tab today. Another thing I want to point out is right here, the rulers. <clears throat> if you do not see your rulers, I want you to go to the View tab right here. Just click it once and there's a, a box right here. You just need to check that box. If it's unchecked and then check, right? So make sure you can see your rulers. Go back to the Home tab because those are the tools we're going to use today. And let's see, we are down here at the, okay, I'm going to get familiar with the word interface, right? But one of the things I have, I haven't, I'm not going to really show you everything in one shot. That would be super boring. So we're going to be creating something and learning the tools. But down at the bottom, you always have your different views and different zooms. So I'm going to make it a little bigger so that my page um, so that you can see my page better. So I'm just going down there and clicking the plus button. Also, I want you to notice down here it says page one of one and zero words. As soon as I start typing, that's going to change. So this is called the status bar and there's different information we can have down here. Um, that also becomes important a little later. Right now, let's just start typing. You're, you have a blinking uh, insert icon right there. So we are just going to type, and we are going to type garden harvest. I think I said party, or did I say festival? Ooh, I think it's party. All right. Garden harvest party. And I'm going to turn myself off so that we can see everything. Do, 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 do. Okay. I actually want to stop recording, but I'm not going to stop recording. Let's make this. Let's do this. Okay. Garden Harvest Party. So I have my words here. Look up here. When you start, now we're just using the default template. We just went to the blank. We started with the blank template, right? Um, and when you just start typing and you have not changed your um, preferences, it's always going to default to Calibri 11. Now, when you look at the Home tab, <clears throat> these are the most commonly used tools. Um, it doesn't mean it's all the tools that you have. So these are the most commonly used tools. And then each of these groups, if you can see, each tab is divided into groups. And the book is going to refer to these groups. So you need to pay attention to that. This is the font group. This is the paragraph group, right? All the group names are down here, the style group. So what will the book will say, it'll say, Home tab, font group, right? First of all, nothing's going to change unless I tell it what to change. These are tools. We have to say what we want to apply that tool to. So I want to change the size of this title because it's going to be the title. So in the old days, we had to go here and change the title. I mean, change the size. Now you'll notice it jumps from 28 to 36. What I want to tell you is that you can type right in here where it says 11. Just type 30. Boom. Now you have 30. So although there is this list with numbers, you can actually put a specific number in there. Okay. These two buttons were added with the the, the advent of the touch screen. So this is, makes it bigger. This one makes it smaller, right? Boom, boom, boom. But it does 
go by these. So it won't go back to 30. So, you know, have, have something around 30 or 36 for your title. This button right here is change it if you when you see an arrow next to a button, click it, and then you have your menu. So you can capitalize each word, you can make it uppercase. I'm gonna make mine uppercase, which is also called all caps, which is capital letters. Um, very inconsistent, which is a little bit hard for uh, especially when you don't have English as your first language. So all caps is the same as uppercase. This guy right here, <laughs> sometimes when I look at it, I kind of laugh, but the, the little purple thing is supposed to be an eraser. I don't know if you all remember what an old fashioned pencil eraser, eraser looks like. When you click it, look what happens. It goes back to the default size of 11. It takes off the formatting that we put on there. So yikes, I just made a mistake. I hit a button I don't want to. What do I do? I undo it. So I come up here, this little button right here. That's what I undo, right? What's the shortcut for undo? I'm sure most of you know it. It is control Z and you'll see that when I put my cursor over this, that little box pops up and it says control Z. Now there is a little arrow next to the, un the undo. And you can choose, you can go and choose what to undo. I can undo all the way to the beginning, or I can just undo one or two things at a time, right? So I just wanted to show you what that little arrow is. So we're still in the font group. We um, have created it with all caps. Um, this is the bold. Most people know what that is. Italic is not familiar to everyone, but that's what that is. Underline is right here, but underline has an arrow next to it. So underline, you click the little arrow and you have more options. You can change the color of it. You can change the zigzag, make it a zigzag. We are not going to put an underline, but I just wanted to show you that. <clears throat> I'm going to skip over these two and go straight to my favorite one. My favorite one is this fat fluffy A. And if you hold your cursor over it, it's called text effects. Click the arrow next to it, and you get a gallery. Just bring your cursor over these. You don't have to click any of them, and you'll see what they look like. Okay? So you can choose any of these. I think the first time I did it, I chose this one, so I'm going to do that again. Now I'm going to go back to my text effects, my fat fluffy A, and be look. So this is the gallery, but down here you can get more specific. You can, um, for example, oops, something's happening here. You can, for example, put a glow around it, right? Harvest party, like that. Or you could put and change the color of the outline, right? You can also have to keep going back to it. Change the size of the outline. Now I'm not expecting you guys to remember all of this. I just want to show you how to dig down. If you can't find exactly what you want, keep digging down to get what you want. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do it similar to what I did earlier, just because I want to be consistent with those people who, who came to the um, class today. I'm just going to go one point. And so now I have a green outline around it. Um, yeah. So that is my title. Now I, I, I really want my title to be centered. And to do centering, you have to go, we're going to move away from font and we're going to come over here to paragraph. This paragraph group is, I prefer it to be called spacing. Uh, it's kind of really the spacing and orientation um, section, but they call it paragraph because it applies to an entire paragraph. So um, we are, it, the default is a line left. When you come to this one, it's center. I do have to click on that to make it happen. 
if I click on this one, it's right aligned. So when I say right aligned, it aligns with the right margin, right? And then this is another option that we're not doing right now. It's very seldom used, actually. We're going to go with center. Let's leave it at center. Um, and that's all we're going to look at for the paragraph group at this second. Um, one thing I want to show you in the font group that I didn't was this guy right here. This you need to pay attention to. This is a detailed dialog box. Remember I said that the most common tools that people use are up here? Well, if you can't find what you want, go to the detailed dialog box and you can uh, make some changes there. For example, the small caps option is in here. So we have bold 36. Uh, our font color is generally black. I could change it here if I want. Um, small caps. I could make it. And then I can say, OK. Oh, small caps didn't work because it was on here. So now let me go back there. Oops. Oh, that was a poor example. Oh yeah, that now worked. Uh, just the G is capital, which I don't really like. I want each word to be big cap. So I'm going to go to this one, this H, and I'm going to take out the small cap from there and make it a cap. That's this is a really hard way to do this. Let's let me back up a minute here. Let's back up. Let's go to detail dialog box. Okay, y'all don't have to follow every move I do. Um, because sometimes that's not productive. Wait till <laughs> wait till I'm done and then you can redo it. So you come into here and you have some different options. Text effects is here again. So this is how you would get to that from here. But you don't really need to do that. Let's go away from that. Um, you can also change your font type here. Of course, you can change your font type here um, and your font color. Anyway, detail dialog box, I want you to know where it is. You will be using that later. Um, Fat Fluffy A is the text effects it's awesome you will be using that um, from often actually <clears throat> even in powerpoint sometimes in excel um, this one is highlight color this one is color of font now even though we have a special font set up there the color is black what if i just sort of wanted to make it gray or the inside of it uh dark green um, or blue. I'm going to go ahead and leave it what it is, but I wanted to show you what that was. There is also a gradient. How would that look? Mm, no, I'm going to leave it. Okay. And we did come over here to paragraph to center it. And I'm going to turn this on because one of the first things that the book is going to tell you to do in the assignment is to turn this on. And the reason I'm turning this on is just to show you what it looks like. Don't let it freak you out. Um, this is a, a paragraph mark. It's like a backward, think of it as a backwards P, paragraph mark. So the paragraph mark holds all the coding for that paragraph. If it's centered, if it's left aligned, is it a bullet point? Is it, um, you know, all these different things. So, at the end, I wrote party, and then I hit enter, and it carries, not just start typing, it carries all of the formatting, the caps, the, the special uh, text effects, etc. down there. So there's two ways you can deal with this. Sometimes people get caught up. If this is like this and you don't like it, you can come over here, select it. Come over here and erase, right? And it just brings you back to the Calibri 11 left aligned, right? 
me show you that again. So I have it selected. I go to Erase. Control Z. Okay, the second way to deal with this is if you are over here and you hit enter and well, second way to deal with it is just to bring your cursor down here and double click. Nope, guess what? That carried down the same formatting, oh, the same size at least. So let's go ahead and erase formatting so that we have our default there. Okay, Garden Harvest Party, that's our title. It's centered. Oh, it's not centered. It is, yeah. It is centered. I can tell. I can see the centered. I can see the bold. Actually, I didn't really want it. Oh, I guess I do like it bold. Yeah. I think when we went to here and selected this, it turned on the bold. Okay. Next. We've done a little bit with these two groups. Let's go to the insert group. Put your blinking cursor down here below the title. Insert. We're going to go to pictures. Now this has changed a little bit. If you have an older version, it may, you only have this device in online. Um, online pictures sometimes create an issue because there are trade. It's not trademark. Some mm, patent issues, right? Um, but this is a, a, an assignment. You're not making any money off of it. If you have a picture from your device, maybe a lo lovely garden or something you want to do, click this and you can go to your pictures and select what you want. I don't really want to show you guys my picture, so I'm going to cancel. Let's go back and if I go to, I'm going to show you both of these because this was new to me today. The first thing I want to tell you is when you see the dot 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 after something like that, that just means another uh, dialog box is going to come up for you to make your selection. Another menu. Okay. So here we are. I'm going to type in garden or veggies. Oh, I guess veggies isn't really a word. Vegetable. Ah, here we got some vegetables. Yeah. Vegetables. You can choose one of these. You don't have to have the exact same picture as I do. You can also, um, let's see, we're having a vegetable, a garden. And type garden and look for pictures here that you want to use. I think that's what I did the first time. So I'm going to do that this, this time too. I'm going to choose this because it looks kind of like, oh, this is a nice one. Peppers look good too. How about I use the peppers? And then I say insert. Aha! There's my picture. Awesome. All right. Now, what do we do with the picture? First thing I want to show you is when you insert anything, you are going to get a special toolbar um, with the tools to work with it, right? This picture format was not here before. Let me undo, Control Z. There's no picture format toolbar there, right? Now I'm going to redo. Now that my picture's here, I have the, my tools to work with it right here. So, um, these little white balls here, you can use to resize your picture. You know, you can use any of them. You can go up and down, you can go to the side, you can do what, you know, however you want to do it. What I want to show you ah, is how we use these tools up here. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is apply a picture style. Now this is called the picture style group, right? So remember in the book, it's going to say, oh, go to your picture format tab to the picture style group. And you're going to click the more button. Do you see this button right here? Oh, this is a gallery here. And there's actually underneath my, 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 my fat arrow, it says more. That's actually the technical 
name for this. So here we are. You have a whole bunch of choices you can make. Just if you just hold just hover over these, you don't have to click any of them and you'll see what they look like. Right? This is the one I chose, so I'm going to choose this one again. And you'll notice that the border is white. We can change that. Okay. So I've applied a picture style. Now I'm going to go to the border color and change it. I want it to be green. No, actually not green because maybe orange. Hmm. Maybe blue. Or maybe because the thing is green. What if we do black, white, gray? Sorry, now I'm getting carried away. I will do yellow because I want it to stand out. All right. So here's where you where you come and you do your border. Now there's more things that we're going to look at another time. Um, one of the things I want to bring your attention to is over to the right, to the far right, is your size. In the book, it, when it tells you to insert something, it may say, make it three and a half inches, right? So you would come in here and do 3.5 and then hit enter. Uh, or, or maybe it says, you know, 6.5 here. Um, you can also resize it manually and you'll see how the size up here changes as you do that, right? So I'm going to do a little bit like this and I'm going to use now the two arrows that you get when you hover over those dots. Um, that's for resizing. The four arrows is for moving and that's true for all the Microsoft stuff. So we can move it over a little bit. No, oh, we can't because of this. This guy is layout options. Kind of irritating right now. So ear layout options. It's hard to read, but you're actually going to be using this in Excel and PowerPoint too. So I want you to become familiar with it. Uh, this is to have text. So the, think of the blue lines as text and those that little half horseshoe as the object because this is for shapes, pictures, whatever, you, any object you put into a, a document or PowerPoint. You have to specify um, how you want the text to be. So in a flyer, we're going to have the text top bottom. So you need to change it to that. Okay. Layout options should be top and bottom for this. Then I'm going to click out of there so that goes away. Now I have my four arrows. I'm going to move it over, try to center it do, 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 right there. Okay. There we go. One more thing I want to show you about this is to see this little guy. There's a circle right there. Do, you can turn it if you want. Now, when you turn it, so look what had just happened. Like there's my title and then look what happens. Boom. My title is gone. Oh my God. What happened? title jump down here. So if that's a problem, you just drag this down and that's okay because your title jumps back up because we chose top and bottom. I want my font above and below this object. Okay. So let me turn it back to here. Uh, let's leave it a little bit crooked and I'll move it up a little closer. Okay. So now we have our, well, actually, let me show you one more thing about this. Um, in your assignment, so we're creating this together and we're, you are, we're all going to create a Garden Harvest Party um, document, right? What um, in your next assignment, your do-it-yourself assignment, you're going to create a flyer for yourself. And one of the instructions is you apply a picture style. But it also says you have to use three other things. So one could be your border color. Uh, one could be, uh, let's see, picture effects. One could be glow. 
You could put a glow around your picture. Um, you could, um, over here in the adjust area it is what I wanted to show you. Corrections, I have actually used this. Maybe I wanted a little lighter, like that. Kind of like that. Let's see. Oh, and then you can get like fuzzier in the background. Yeah. Um, artistic effects. Just hover over these and see what happens to your picture. So when I say use three other things from this toolbar, this could be one of them. Um, transparency is another thing. This is a good thing to use if you want to put words over it. If you're putting font over a picture, sometimes it's really hard to read if it's like this. So you would make it a little more transparent and then you just go ahead and put your type whatever you need on top of it. Okay. So that's some of our other tools, picture format tools. If you're clicked here and you're like, oh my God, wait, how come I don't have my picture format toolbar up here? The reason is because you're not, don't have picture selected, right? So dynamic toolbar is when the system knows that you're, you have selected a picture, it's going to give you all the picture tools you need. Okay. Groovy. Let's go on to the next part. <clears throat> I'm going to go below, below the picture. Click down there. Put my cursor there. Oh my goodness. I need to pause because I've forgotten what I wrote on the last assignment. Uh, let's see. This is what I will do. I will open it file. Here's my one that I did before. This is the picture I chose before. Okay. Um, copy. I'm going to go to my other document, go down here to my taskbar, go to my other document. I can tell because it has the other picture. I want to show you something about pasting. I mean, you're not going to use this. You're not going to use the paste feature. But <clears throat> when you paste, you can you have different options. You can just paste the text, right? Uh, which is what I'm going to do because I do not want any of these. I want to do normal here. Okay. So what I want you to do is when you click here, just type this. I'm going to make it a little bigger so you can see it. Let me scroll down. Come get fresh garden produce. Okay, why are there dots between the words? It's because this is turned on. Show high. And, and the paragraph marks at the end. So I'm going to turn that off because I know a lot of you get confused by it. This is what you're, you turn it off. When you turn it on, you notice there's dots between the words and there's these paragraph marks at the end. I'm going to turn it off and they're gone. Come get fresh garden produce at the Bella Vista Garden Harvest Party, period. We have too many tomatoes, zucchinis, melons, abundant herbs like basil, cilantro, dill. Come to Bella Vista Park Saturday at 11 a.m. Right, so we typed that. And then we hit, hold on. Then you hit enter. And you typed, bring your own, you typed this, bring your own bag to carry produce, come with COVID mask, share your own abundance. Now, I want these to be bullet points. If you have already typed it, you can select it. 
go up here to the paragraph area. This is again why I like this to be spacing and orientation. This paragraph group on the home tab. And we are going to, here's your bullet points. If you just click the bullet points, it's going to use the default, which is fine. You can also click the arrow next to it and choose anything you want. So how it works with this is when you're typing, I'm sorry, I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to say, I just want to like turn on the bullet points first and then go to bring your own bag. I want to show you this. When I click enter, it actually brings me to the second bullet point. So it keeps going. Enter again. Okay, I have three. I hit enter again and there's another bullet point. It keeps going until you turn it off. How do you turn it off? You can go up to your paragraph mark. Just click it again. It's a toggle key. Uh, once you click it once, it's on. You click it again, it's off. Okay? So I just wanted to show you that because it's working a little differently this time. And then the final line says for more information. Okay. Let's get to uh, formatting this because as a flyer, this is really bad. The font is too small. No one's going to be able to read it. Let's go ahead and for the first, uh, we're going to select the first paragraph here. So if I want to make a change just to one word, you can double click it. Another way is to triple click one, two, three, and it does the whole paragraph. Um, another way to select a whole paragraph is to be out here in the margin, where it just, I, don't, I hope you can see my. Um, my arrow and I click down on my mouse and I hold it. Oh, that just, if you click once and let go, it does the line. If you click once and hold it and drag down, you can select as much as you want and just wait till you get to what you want. I only want this. Actually, let's make all of it a different color. So select all of it and we're going to go up to the font area. Now you know that what this is. We did that for the title. We're going to go over here to font color, click the arrow, and I'm going to make it like a dark green. It's way too small. I'm going to make it bigger. So you can either use this button or use this button to make it bigger. There we go. 14 or 16 looks good. Do I have enough room for that? Oh, I do. If you got enough room, make it big. Make it like 16 or whatever. Okay, so we did that. It's all green. Now I want to highlight the important parts. So come get fresh bone. I think this is really important. Come to Bella Vista Park Saturday at 11. Let's go ahead and make that bold. If you want, you can use a highlighter, right? I didn't the first time, so I'm going to keep the highlighter off. But of course, if you turn it in with the highlighter on, that's groovy. Um, let's see, what else? I, uh, we made it bold. We could make it italic. We could change the color of it even. Make it a bright color. Big blue. I think I'm going to leave it green because I did in the first one, the one that I didn't record. I'm not sure that I made it italic. Italic is your choice. We're going to leave these as they are. Let's go down to the final line here. And I want to select the whole line. We're going to center this. To, to center it, we're going to go up to the paragraph area. Right now, it is left aligned, right? It's along the left margin. Center. There we go. It's centered now. And the next thing we're going to do to it is a new tool. This is not highlight. This is, this, this is a paint bucket. 
this is supposed to look like a paint bucket. It's called shading. So in the book, it'll say, oh, use home tab paragraph group shading. Okay. So I want you to shade this paragraph with some color, whatever color you want. I'll use this one. I think I used green last time. But what I want you to notice is that the shading actually comes all the way out. It does a whole line. It comes all the way out to the margin. See on both sides. Whereas the highlight, I'll do this highlight right here, only does the words. Okay. I'm going to turn my highlight off here. What color? Ah! Oh, look, I have a pencil to erase it. Okay, let's turn the highlight off. Okay. All right. So this is shading. Uh, it's a paint bucket, and it's used more to do like the whole, oops, to the whole, look, my cursor's in this one, and if I go to shading, it does the whole paragraph, right? It's kind of a good thing to do if you want maybe your title, um, maybe you want your title to like stand out. You could also do shading for your title, right? Um, which is kind of fun. I did not do that first time, so this is not required, but I will show you what that looks like. Okay. Um, the text is pretty good. We've got our picture in there. Um, the last thing I want to do is again in the paragraph group, we're looking at the paragraph group right now. We are going to go to this paragraph up here and you can highlight the whole paragraph. Or you could just put your cursor in it because it knows that whatever you do here is applying to the entire paragraph. So just so there's no confusion, I'm going to select this paragraph and I am going to change the line spacing. Let's change it to one and a half, at least one and a half. If it can still fit on the page, we're good. Yes, we've got plenty of room. So I'm going to do one and a half spacing there. And we're good. Okay, let me take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so here so far is my, I've got a little extra room. I'm going to make this font bigger. Okay, I'm going to go zoom in. We only have a couple more things to take care of. I'm going to select all of this and just go bigger. Yeah, that's good. All right, I like it. Uh, now it's easy to read. The last thing we're going to do is put a border on it, an art border. So um, we are going to go to, we looked at the home tab, right? These are, these are the most common things. We used insert to look at picture. Any object you're going to insert, you're going to use the insert tab. But to you do the border, you are going to go to the design tab. Now we will get into themes and colors and all that stuff later. But right now I want you to go all the way to the far right. Page borders. Click on that. And here's this box. This is a really old dialog box. So it's a little, it's not very user friendly. You don't look at it and like immediately know how to use it. So I'm going to show you some tips. We're making a page border and I want you to use art. So down here, there's this thing that says art. So click that. And then you can go through and choose anything. You can do trees around there. You can do, uh, let's see, balloons. Now, now let's see, I'm going to go down farther. There's a lot of them. You do stars and you can make them bigger. Uh, sometimes you can change the color because if, if the color is grayed out, you won't be able to change it. But this one, actually, we can change the color. We can also change the size, make it bigger or smaller. Um, let's see what that one looks like. There you go. There's my border. Right? If you don't like that one, go back. Whoop. Go back to page borders, 
and change it. You know, use another one. Let's see if this one works. This one, I still have the green color. That's kind of nice. I could change the color. Now, some of these, when you choose them, will not you'll not be able to change the color or the size. But um, yeah, let me see what this one looks like. Oh, that one's good. Uh, I like the other one. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna undo and leave it like that. There is my final product. Let me zoom out. Boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna move this up so you can see more. And zoom out. Boom, boom, boom. There is the flyer. You know what I'm gonna do? I will take a picture of this and actually put it into um put it into canvas so that you have at least you can at least eyeball what it is that's due oh do not leave me yet you have one really important thing to do right now you need to do a save as so you got to do file now there's a save button up here this save button will save it but it's not really going to let you make the choices you want i want you to go to file save as Come on. Your book, you may look a very a little different from this if you have an older version or a different version of 365. Go to either this PC or browse. Basically, we need to find a place that we're going to store these things, right? So right now, it defaults to documents. Um, this is part of module two. That I'm really going to look at next week. Um, this PC documents. This is where the, this is where it is right now. If I want to change that, I need to come over here in the navigation pane, click desktop, and then I already have a CIS one folder, so I would select that. If you don't, you can create a new folder and call it CIS one. I'm going to select by. I think I have to double click actually. Yeah. So now here is, I'm now in the CIS1 folder. This is the name. I actually already have something called this. So I'm going to say Garden Harvest Party 2. Change the name. Um, and then I'm going to do save. And there we go. Now it says Garden Harvest Party 2. You can see that up here. When you go to the file menu, you can see, actually, you have to go to info. You can see where it's stored. It's stored on desktop, CIS1 folder. This is the title. This is all metadata. We're going to look at this metadata uh, next week. But I just want you to simply create this document, save it. You have to know where it is because then you're going to turn it in. I'm going to go to Canvas. I'm going to turn it in. Intro to Office Word Flyer. This was the assignment. Come on, open up. Sorry, my internet service is tired. I've been on it a lot today. There we go. So I've already submitted it because I did that during the zoom meeting but you can hit resubmit or submit it's good it's this you'll, you'll come to the same thing so come down here choose file and we come again to this file explorer window so what i'd like you to do here is you go to desktop cis1 and here's your documents go ahead and turn it in don't forget to hit the submit. Submitting and I love the little, yay, all that stuff that comes up. Okay, and once you do, of course, it'll say submit, you know, submitted. You're done with this. And then we'll go to the next assignment in this module is to create a flyer similar to the class flyer. You're gonna have a topic of your choice so it could be soccer club, barbecue, birthday party, protest, whatever you want to do. Um, the directions are here. 
You can download this or just use the preview. I, really, it depends on what you're working with. So this is what to include in your DIY flyer. You're going to center your title, your font size at least 26. You're going to use text effects, which is the fat fluffy A. Change your font color, etc. So here's all the directions. It's exactly the same thing we just did. You're going to put a border on it, like we just did. Um, and there's little clues, like add page border, go to design tab, right? Um, you're going to enter your picture, then you type a short paragraph, and then you put three bullet points, and then you'll have a final line for contact info. You'll center that line, etc. Best of luck. Have fun with this one. Uh, play with the picture tools. Get familiar with it. That's what this is about. And um, I think I'm done. I think we're good. All right. Take care and have a good weekend. Ciao.